And if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to Gehenna, to the unquenchable fire. Now, your Bible will either say hell or Hades, depending on who the English translators are, but the word is Gehenna, nothing else. So here now we seem to have located the hell in the Bible. It wasn't Sheol, the pit, or Hades. But Gehenna seems to fit this idea of hell exactly. Except Gehenna was a place, a literal place, well known to Israel. Gehenna means the Valley of Hinnom. This Valley of Hinnom had a long reputation as an awful place, a deeply sinful and cursed history to Gehenna. And we read about it in 2 Kings, this verse here. And he defiled Topheth, which in the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, Gehenna, that no one might burn his son or his daughter as an offering to Molech. Yeah, the, the story is that some very wicked Jewish idol worshipers had gone so far as to sacrifice children to the god Molech and did so in the valley of Hinnom, in Gehenna. Ever since Gehenna, the valley just south of the city walls of Jerusalem, served as the city dump. Everyone's trash was dumped there and continuously burned. Gehenna, the city dump, it is the destination for all things worthless and abominable. It is where our sin and love of sin belong. How can we live with hope looking through the gates of Hades when the sign above it says in Dante's Inferno, abandon hope all ye who enter here. How do we live with hope when the reality of hell might hang over our heads? Okay, well, first of all, let's be very honest here. Talking about hell can be very manipulative. One of the ugliest aspects of our evangelicalism is that we've built up hell in order to frighten people into submission and compliance. The church has done this since the earliest centuries, talking a lot about hell, getting people nervous. We hold the keys of king and the keys to heaven and hell. If you don't do precisely as we say, well, who can be so sure about your salvation? I've heard evangelists go on and on about hell, chiefly as a way of securing a, an impulsive conversion out of gullible and frightened listeners. Many of these proclaim a hell not found anywhere in Scripture, but found in Milton, Dante, Hellraiser and scripture-like books that were never accepted as scripture by Jews or Christians. And yet there is hope. Um, perhaps you've heard of the harrowing of hell. Have you heard of the harrowing of hell? This is a thing. This refers to the idea that Jesus, upon dying on the cross, descended into hell to clean the place up for us. From 1 Peter 3, 18 and 19, we have, this is kind of the sole reference to it. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison. Prison being Sheol, Hades, underworld. In the Apostles' Creed, which we'll say today, we always say, he descended into hell. Well, what do we mean by that? Do we mean he descended to Hades, that he simply died? Or do we mean something else? Again, it depends who you read. Um, one view is that he went to hell because he had the sins of the world on his shoulders and those sins take him there. John Calvin said that the descent into hell was an expression of the depth of his suffering and the great cost to the Son of God. Martin Luther said that Jesus stormed the gates of hell, turned on the lights, put out the fire, and wrapped up all the devils in chains such that hell was transformed and will no longer be a problem. It'll look like that. But you know something that the Apostles' Creed doesn't say hell in its original language, which was Latin. It just says down below. It doesn't say Gehenna, it doesn't say Hades, it doesn't say Sheol. It says, he descended down below. Interpretations open. 
So another view is called annihilationism. Annihilationism means second death. In other words, no eternal torment, but just an eventual oblivion and non-being for the unsaved. We get something from our text, from verse 14 of today's text. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. Now, isn't this wonderful? This is good news. Death and Hades destroyed forever. The lake of fire puts death to death and puts eternal torment to an end. 